Welcome back to the One Minute Trader podcast. And in our continuing saga to provide quality listeners uh, data and information that we think that will apply to their everyday trading, wanted today to talk a little bit about um, further in my trading process. And, and really, I think that this can help traders think through what they are doing in the markets and why. And in the first uh, podcast on this topic, I talked a little bit about uh, dealing with market context, evaluating what has been happening in the, mar in the related markets and how uh, across the different time frames uh, that we use, uh, this can be helpful in, in, in relating to our next day, if you will, in trading. The second phase of my process, second phase of my process rather, uh, involves the identification of key price levels as potential targets for market moves. This is where my process differs from that of many traders. Uh, rather than beginning a trade idea with a setup, I don't really look at charts uh, and patterns the way many people do. I start with potential targets and where I think the market could go, both higher and lower. And it is, all, it, it is only once I have a target in mind that I would look for a possible entry point that provides a favorable reward level relative to the risk. So among the key price levels that I commonly rely upon are, uh, but th these are not by any means exclusive or fully inclusive, but I wanna talk about the, the key uh, levels that I look upon. The overnight high and the overnight low from the Globex stock index futures trading. So if I'm looking at the S&P, I wanna see how high did it trade overnight, and I wanted to see how low that it trades. These are very important. The odds are very, very high that we will take out either, either, uh, either or the overnight high or low during the regular trading hours. When stocks open inside their overnight range, I will usually uh, use the early market action to handicap the odds of breaking out of that range. That is often my first trade of the day. Secondly, the volume weighted average price is something that I use, also known as the VWAP. You've probably heard this all the time. I use either a VWAP or I use a simple exponential moving average. Uh, different time frames that I like and I put on all my charts and I've always, always told people I prefer a 10 EMA, a 10 exponential moving average all the time for uh, the stock index futures markets along with commodities, oil, grains. I found this to be my most useful um, tool. And this is calculated again on the overnight session. So are we opening near the highs or the lows of the overnight range but cannot sustain those highs or lows? This is key. Are we seeing buying or selling interest dry up? I will look for stocks to move back into their overnight range and, and return uh, to the VWAP. And this is another trade that can set up early in the day. Next, the previous day's high and low are really crucial. My research suggests that the S&P index trades either above its prior days, higher below its previous days low over 85% of the time. So one way or the other, we are going to move above or below where the market was yesterday. So the, that's why these are so crucial for traders to be aware of these numbers. Relatively few days are, are inside days, which means it stays inside the high and the low from yesterday. And I will use this price uh, and indicator action to handicap, again, the odds of taking out the previous day's highs or lows. When you couple this with the market profile, which gives you, are you in value for the day? Are you, out of, are you inside of value or outside of value for yesterday's? Uh, all these things become very important for me to determine whether there's gonna be an early trade setup, especially during trending days, right? Trending days are the most difficult to figure out until probably half the day and 90% of the move is over. So. Next on my list, I look at the, uh, you know, kind of the, the, is the exponential moving average or the VWAP, is it rising or is it falling? If we see buying or selling dry up as we attempt to hold prices above or below yesterday's high or low, we can anticipate a move back into the previous day's range. That sets up the current day's VWAP and the prior day's pivot levels, which I also utilize on my charts as potential targets. So you've got a number of things going on here that you need to keep track of. Pivots, you've got uh, your, your, are we trending up or down? And uh, is the, the, the exponential moving averages or the VWAP, if you use both of them, are they trending up or down or changing as the day goes on?
Next, you have the previous day's pivot level. And I, I really say pivot level, but I mean point of control. So I calculate the point of control from yesterday using uh, TPOs and market profile and volume profile analysis. My historical calculations find that we typically will touch the previous day's point of control during the next day's trading about 75% of the time. This makes this point of control a key target worth considering when markets can't sustain moves outside of yesterday's range. And then we talked a little bit about the pivots. I calculate the, you know, some proprietary pivots using volatility weighted formulas. Uh, and, and I do talk about these, but uh, you, can, you can look for these and use any pivots that you want. But I have found some based on times that I like that, that have worked considerably for me over the last really 25 years, especially for very, very um, uh, liquid products like the S&P, like oil. And they do have, and I have a little bit, little bit different spin on both of these. Next, you want to take a look at the price levels that have attracted high levels of volume. And this is really, for me, the most important thing. Where is the market tending to find areas of interest? So you have typically a value area high, you have a value area low. And we will see the stocks trade in these ranges with significant volume between both the highs and the lows of the pricing. So if we are unable to sustain moves above or below either of these um, significant areas, very often we will get a move back to that high volume node. So that can set up very nice reversal trades on a short term basis that you also need to be pay paying aware of. And then obviously support resistance levels from previous days, Fibonacci levels, Here's where we look to further identify price levels where price has shut off in recent days. And many times these levels are helpful. So going back a week or two weeks where we saw a lot of interest in these same areas, I generally like to look at both two, five, 10, 20 days back in ranges to see where the value area highs, value area lows are. And I put all of those together in a nice spreadsheet that I've created and we use to teach and, and train people. Uh, and it, so it is, it is also actually tied to uh, a data feed that is populated and keeps track. And, and actually, I've built some nice alerts on that that can tell me, hey, we're getting outside of this range or we're getting beyond the norm uh, of a product. So a large part of the preparation for the day is identifying these levels, knowing where they are, writing them down, putting them in a spreadsheet, marking them on charts. You can do that also, and we do that. But having those active charts always helps knowing where whether you're trading in a trending or again a bracketing market you trade trending markets much different than you trade bracketing markets in all markets trend and bracket trend and bracket over and over again this is the key to the game okay the market is gaining or losing strength at times and you need to know trending brackets trending or brackets with these key price levels you're going to be off to a good start and hopefully have some targets in mind before the market even opens because of uh, these things that we laid out so in the next section we're going to be talking a little bit about kind of some what I the questions I kind of ask myself when I'm preparing to trade for the market day. So I am Matt Davia with the One Minute Trader podcast. Thanks again for listening. Please like us on Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to us. Please share with friends. We appreciate the emails. If you'd like to ask us a question anytime, we're always doing reader email blogs and posts. Also, Matt at One Minute Trader TV. Thanks again for listening and have yourself a wonderful day. I appreciate your time.